This video will discuss orbital inversion symmetry and the labels gerata and ungerata in orbitals of diatomic molecules. So if we have our diatomic molecule here, if it is a homonuclear diatomic, where the charge of nucleus A equals the charge of nucleus B, and their masses equal one another as well, we would have in the middle here what in symmetry we call an inversion center. So our Hamiltonian is going to commute with what we call the inversion operator. So our molecular orbitals, our orbitals which are eigenfunctions of our Hamiltonian, are also going to be eigenfunctions of this inversion operator. So when I take an orbital and I act on it with the inversion operator, P, I, and V as I have it labeled, what I get is psi, psi i of x, y, z goes to psi i of minus x, minus y, and minus c. So wherever I am on one part relative to my origin, I invert to the other side. Invert my value of x, invert my value of y, invert my value of z. All right, so if I apply this inversion operator twice to an orbital, then it's going to go to negative x, negative y, negative z, and then going to go back when I multiply it times one, net, times minus one again. So the inversion operator acting on the inversion operator squared acting on a an atomic orbital, or sorry, molecular orbital, since we're dealing with molecules. The inversion operator squared acting on a molecular orbital gives me the same molecular orbital back. So p in squared acting on psi i equals c, c squared psi i. So this gives back the same wave function. So the eigenvalues of p in squared have to be one. So the eigenvalues of the original inversion operator are going to be plus and minus one. So some of our orbitals are going to give back the same orbital when we apply the inversion to them. Some are going to give the, the same orbital but with the opposite sign. So these eigenvalues allow us to assign labels to our individual uh, molecular orbitals of G or U, meaning gerata or ungerata, which, which connote symmetry or anti-symmetry with respect to inversion. A gerata orbital is symmetric with respect to inversion. It has an eigenvalue of plus one for the inversion operator. A, and a state with the label ungerata is anti-symmetric with respect to inversion. It has an eigenvalue of minus one for the inversion operator. So let's look at some cases here. So the inversion operator acting on a state with the label G gives back psi G. Inversion operator acting on psi U gives minus psi U. So for sigma G, that's an orbital with uh, sigma angular momentum and gerata sy inversion symmetry. If I invert it, notice everywhere I go, if I invert through the origin, wherever I'm positive, I stay positive. So that's a gerata case. Over here for psi u, whenever I invert through the origin, I always end up on something with an opposite sign. So inverting this orbital would re result in a negative sign, so this is a sigma u. Similarly, for pi states, I have, actually this is, yep, no, I got it correct. Ooh, check myself there. If I invert here, I go from positive to negative, negative to positive, etc. everywhere I go. So this is in fact an ungerata orbital. For the for this combination of a pi or a pi orbital, I go inverting through there, positive to positive, negative to negative, etc. everywhere I go. So this is a gerata pi orbital. And I can have other cases where I have sigmas that look more complicated, but positive to positive, positive to positive negative to negative. Everywhere I go, it stays the same. So that's gerata. And this one, positive, negative to positive, positive to negative, uh, positive to negative, negative to positive, etc. So this is a gerata case. So for a homonuclear diatomic, we have inversion symmetry. Our molecular orbitals are all going to either be symmetric or anti-symmetric with respect to the inversion operator, having an eigenvalue of plus one or minus one. If it's plus one, it's gerata, and they are symmetric with respect to inversion. If it's minus one, they are ungerata and anti-symmetric to inversion. 
giving us labels of subscript G and subscript U to apply to our molecular orbitals.